Hello and welcome back to question 11 part 1 Vectors! Oh, the wonders of technology! We're going to do this question with a 3D graphing software GeoGebra It is 100% free I've also shared the link to uh, this drawing So you can click on it, rotate it around if you want on your own So you get a better understanding of what is going on But first, what is the question? Let's go to the iPad right, The question says that Mr. Neo wants to build a shed in his garden and they give you actually two drawings, two diagrams, which is really nice, right? So this over here is the bird's eye view, right? Meaning if you're a bird, you're flying across this garden, you look down directly, the shed kind of looks like this, okay? And then we have a perspective view over here, so a 3D kind of shape of the shed. It has a slanted roof on the left, slanted roof on the right. Uh, the base area is kind of rectangular, right? We can tell from the bird's eye view, okay? Next, the question gives you two pieces of information, number one, the position of this point P over here is given to be 4i plus 2j plus 4k which means I can write it as the coordinates 4, 2, 4 Next, they've also given you the equation of this plane over here the left slanted face of this uh, shared So since this is a revision video I thought it'd be good if we go through the three different forms of equation of the plane So let's look at the side over here Number one, we have the parametric form. The parametric form, okay, it looks like a bunch of letters, but actually is uh, quite nice. It states that any point on this plane that you're trying to describe can be written as a fixed point plus a multiple of one direction plus a multiple of another direction. What does that mean? Let's look at a concrete example. The XY Cartesian plane that we're so familiar with. I claim that I can describe any point on the XY plane using just a fixed point, say one, two, and two directions. One to the right, one upwards. So you may be asking, hey, how do you describe, say, the origin? It's not to the right and not upwards. Aha. Uh -huh. For my fixed point, one, two, I can move negative one units in the right direction, negative two units in the up direction, and I'll end up at the origin. I just need to choose my multiples of my directions correctly. So you can see, right, with a fixed point and any multiple or uh, multiples of uh, two directions, I can describe any point as long as my two uh, directions are not parallel. Right? For example, if I have direction one to be right, direction one to be left, then I can only describe uh, things on this line here. I cannot get a vertical displacement. Yes? So that is the parametric form over here. There you go. Next, we have the scalar product form, which is very compact and very useful. It states that any point on the plane, when you dot it with its own normal vector, you'll get a fixed constant k. Which is quite strange if you think about it. Like, even if I choose a point that is like very large, 99999, you know, like huge coordinates, huge values here, why does it still give you a constant? That is because by now you should sort of know that the dot product gives you a perpendicular distance. It can, right? So if you take any point, even if you choose it very far away, what you're doing is you're finding sort of like the perpendicular distance here, a multiple of this actually, because it depends on what your normal vector is, right? So when you do that, you're getting kind of a multiple of your distance of this plane from the origin, okay? The dot product actually is somewhat of a multiple of distance from the origin. And that also kind of goes to show that if your plane contains the origin, then the dot product will always be zero. Yeah. So next, the last form is the Cartesian form, which is what we're given in this question. It says that some multiple of x plus some multiple of y plus some multiple of z equals to k. And you notice I use the same k over here? That is because these two forms, scalar product and Cartesian form, are linked. Let me show you how to go from this form right, and reverse back into the scalar product form. Okay, from the dot definition of dot product, I can say that alpha x plus beta y plus gamma z can be decomposed into this x y z dot alpha beta gamma, right? Because dot product says that the dot of two vectors is x times alpha plus y times beta plus z times gamma, and then I can say that hey, x y z are the variables, all the different points on my plane. Uh, my normal vector is kind of fixed, right? I can describe it with constants. And that's how you get uh, from Cartesian to scalar product. Next, uh, sorry, end of revision, let's look at the question again. So in part one, or before that, we are given the, scale, uh, the Cartesian equation of uh, the left slanted roof, A, B, Q, P here, this one over here, right? How do I get the normal vector from here? So exactly what we did just now, I can decompose this into x, y, z dot negative two, negative one, three. Okay, 
that tells me the normal vector of ABQP is negative 2, negative 0.3. So let's write that down. Maybe draw that on our diagram over here. Okay, so this normal vector will be negative 2, negative 1, 3. And part 1, right, part 1 claims that, hey, the other slanted roof, CDPQ, will have a normal vector of 2, 1, 3. 2i plus j plus 3k. Right, so it claims that, you know, this is positive 2, positive 1, and positive 3. Yeah? Why is that so? Why should it be like positive, positive, and this one's not negative? Right? Let's take a look. Number one, I claim that, you know, before we look at the nice drawing on GeoGebra, this is why I claim first. If you look at the front, right, if you stand in front of the shed, say over here, and you're looking at this face, this wall over here, a, D, E, H, if you're looking at it this way, then you should be able to see that uh, where normal, the two normals meet, right? If I draw a vertical uh, vector upwards, that vertical vector will split the angle between these two normal vectors, right? Let's switch over to the nice 3D view, okay? So I've gone ahead and plot out the two normal vectors here, N1, N2, okay? As you can see, they kind of pop up from the left and right slanted roof. Okay, next, if I were to say rotate uh, this diagram so that we uh, look at this shed from the front. Okay, someone like this. Uh, yeah, I think this is the best I can do around here. And I draw a vertical line upwards. This vertical line will bisect the angle between these two, meaning there's some sort of symmetry between these two planes or these two normal vectors if I consider a plane right, that goes vertical upwards and passes through the points P and Q. Right, there's some symmetry there. Okay, the next thing that you want to take note, right, let's go back to the iPad, is that from the bird's eye view right, of the shed, then the normal, the first normal vector will come up uh, from the roof somewhere around here, the second one will come up around here. You'll notice that this is sort of like moving in the negative x direction and negative y direction, so negative 2, negative 1. The other one should be positive 2, positive 1. Okay, so let's go back. Let's take a look from the bird's eye view. Right. And in this bird's eye view, I want to rotate such that uh, Can you see the grey colour grid in the background? I want to make it uh, upright Upright square right. So that Y is sort of pointing upwards and X is pointing this way yeah. Just let me rotate a bit more um, right. Something like that Okay. And you can see that from the intersection of the two normals If I move two units to the left One unit down That is where my left slanted uh, normal will pop out of the roof and again from the center, two units to the right, positive two, positive one, that's where you get the other normal vector coming out of the roof. Okay? So that is sort of like the explanation, right? Of course, you can't be drawing all this in the exams. What should you be writing down? Okay? So you can say that, okay, let's look at this diagram over here. There is a, there is a symmetry between the two normal vectors if you consider a plane that passes, a vertical plane that passes through Q and P. Yeah. So if I were to draw a vertical plane that passes through Q and P, it might look something like this. Right. So there's some symmetry there between the two normal vectors. Therefore, the normal vector of uh, N2 right, should be this. Right. This looks like 1. Let me just write it as 2. N2 should be this. The question says that hence, can you show the equation of the right stunted roof is going to be 2x plus y plus 3z equals to 22. No problem, because I can decompose this into some point on the plane x, y, z times 2, 1, 3. Okay? And what points do I know? Oh, I know point P. Right? I know point P is on both planes. Right? That is 4, 2, 4. So I can take 4, 2, 4 dot 2, 1, 3. And that will give me 4 times 2, 8, plus 2 times 1, plus 4 times 3. And that is equal to 22 and therefore we are shown oh rather not you know let's do it one more step and say that therefore r dot n is equal to 22 and if you write in Cartesian form that will be 2x plus y plus 3z equals to 22 right. and that is the answer for question 11 part 1 I hope you found this useful and I guess I'll see you in the next one.